Good day all of my beloved villagers. Today we are in a very interesting spot in Sim Reap. It's called the Footprint. As you can see right now, I'm standing in front of a lot of books. So which is here, you can swap your books with people you know here. Also, you can purchase the books that you love the author. So I have a more interesting story about this place I want to share with you. But now, follow me la. Hi, my name is Pak Day. I live in Siem Reap in Cambodia and I am the manager at Footprint Cafes. Hello everyone, today we are very happy to have a conversation with Pak Day. And very nice to meet you, Suk Stai. Suk Stai. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of your you know, independent intro, we have known that you introduced yourself a little bit. So I would like to know more about you know, who you are in this place. Like right now we're sitting in the you know, Footprint Cafe, who you are. Can you share a little bit more about your personal story with everyone? I started uh, uh, late 2016. And uh, my role here as the uh, manager here, and I've been uh, working here like almost uh, five years in terms of the uh, running everything, uh, managing, control, uh, the, the cafe, try to be manage the cafe and then make sure the cafe runs smoothly. And being, uh, I have been uh, training in the team how to be work as a professional as uh, I've been uh, graduated at uh, hospitality. As the footprint, we are, which is the, 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 the cafe that uh, social enterprise, we are based on the, uh, our mission based on like three P's and we are which is like a people, planet, profits. About the people, which is we, we care about the team, we provide them like a fair wage, we offer like a training, we giving them with a, 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 a personal development training if they want to uh, do something, they, they to develop themselves. Uh, planet, which is we try to be a uh, sale as we can, like make sure that uh, our place using the eco-friendly, using less plastic, recycle, which is like we try to be uh, recycle as we can, which we have like do not our use it oil to the, uh, the organization that they can turn the, the oil to the bio, bio soap or something. About the profit, which is like we giving 100% uh, to the, the communities, after the generate the money, which is we, we work with the education, which we giving them as the grants, which is decided by the uh, local uh, committees. So, as Bon just mentioned, this is like a UK-owned non-profit organization. So they're focused on helping the local community. As he just mentioned, 100% of the profit going to the local community. Okay, so. As you just mentioned, there's a lot of local people you've been working on together, right? So, and right now, like Footprint, pretty much you have uh, Westerner food and you also have a Khmer food. So, when the staff, especially the cooks, when they cook Westerner food, how do they feel the culture differently, you know? And for us, it's luckily that we, we, we hired a chef who has experience that he he been working with uh, some uh, hotel and restaurant that know well about like uh, Western food and Khmer food. And for him, the challenge for, for the chef, which is to train the, the, the team in the kitchen, and then most of them, they feel like struggling because and why the, the food need to be like have meat, bread, and some of the, the mm. mashed potato, and some other side with the sauce because like it's more complicated for them. Like even like one one dish need to be prepare everything like and, and then like they need to be work on like different uh, ingredient need to be separately and which is the the most challenge for them. For the the, the foreigner, they come here for Cambodia. They looking for my food. They they not really want to come here for a uh, 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 Western food because they they been living in the country. They know well about the food. For 
to come here, they just want to be like how the Cambodian food look like and how the taste as well. I'm sure in this place we have a lot of customers or tourists from everywhere of the world, you know. And we also have a lot of common friends came here sometime for afternoon tea. Some people come here just for gathering together. And what is the most ordered dish in your place in the footprint? Yeah, because like everyone loves the, the fish mok, which is like a, a really good flavor. And then like people, they know like my food, they must be know about the fish mok. They can find like everywhere. And then like for us, we can say like our fish mok, which is the best. And uh, the curry is good too because we have two options, which one with the, come with the meat and another one come with just only a uh, vegetable that uh, vegetarian or vegan people that can order that as well. Okay, Bon, so I think there's a lot of tourists that really do, for, you know, they really do love Southeast Asia food, but sometimes they confuse what is a curry and what is a mug. It's typical like uh, different, it's similar like my spice, but it's just like uh, for the fish and milk, which is a traditional one. They come with uh, more coconut and with the uh, new leaf, uh, new leaf, which is a special leaf one that everyone feel like when they put that leaf in that, become to the another flavor, like another, like can feel like uh, more spice, uh, more spices and more flavor on that dish. Especially like bird well with the, the, the fish. And we all know Southeast Asia can mean with different countries, especially Myanmar, that as I myself knowing that, same as Cambodia is a very Buddhism country. There's a lot of things I guess if you're a tourist and you fall in love with this country, try to learn some basic things I think you might want to know. So I won't ask you, Bong, I heard that in Cambodia, if you touch the kid's head, it's not really, you know, not really pleasant thing to do. So except that, what else the tourists? A uh, few points that uh, the tourists might be need to avoid is by pointing someone like really straightly or to go to the temple when they meet the, the monk should be not like go really close to the monk, especially for the, the lady. Because like we seen, we, we has the experience with the, the tourists. Most of them they excited with the monk when they see the first time when they see the monk. They really want to get a photo to show their, their friend or post on social media. But this one need to be avoid or they can be photo with the, the monk, but can be like to be like away a bit from the monk. That's really nice to know. And as we right now, people prefer Sim Reap the city, but once I'm stepping in this city, it is beautiful, but I somehow give me this kind of chill vibe. I, you know, I ride my bicycle every day. Everybody just look at me and say hi. Even can have a very short conversation. For example, while I'm riding a bicycle, mm. blah, blah. And then my friend, hey, Mario, good morning. I say, hey, good morning. You know, very slow and very chill. So give me a very, smooth feeling that living here you feel everything just so nice so slow and sometimes can be very bad right if you're in a hurry on the time but luckily Sim Reap doesn't have you know a traffic horribly like Phnom Penh so I think it's a very good point to say that and um, how do you understand the lifestyle in Sim Reap? And for the, the lifestyle in Sim Reap, they are kind of like right now, it's kind of too like uh, modern and some people they still keep in their, their, their lifestyle as the in the village. Because like I can say like in the village, most of them like when they, example, when they finish from work or from school, most of them they just back home for enjoy with the, the meal, with their family or, or watching some movie at home. And for the people in the city, they are after they work or after they study, they, they hang out with their friends or they, they, some of them, they continue their work with go to the, at the, uh, some coffee shop to finish the project or some that, example, like Friday, they hang out with friends with uh, some like restaurants and bar, like, and some they still communicate about their, their work and how it needs to be done or is they, when they, they're stressful enjoy with the enjoy with the drink or, or lifestyle because in Simbrip really convenient for them that 
even they finish work and then back home late, late night, which is really sad. It's compared to Phnom Penh, like really rough time for them, even like, even they, they finish work, they need to be like, make sure they have more time to, to pass the traffic because the traffic in Phnom Penh like really uh, busy. And then like the time between the time to time, it's, it's quite long for everyone, especially if they want to hang out with friends, they need to be like, don't be too much, they need to be like even <laughs> one drink, that's it. And then they need to be, tra uh, they need to be uh, travel safely back home. You know, since we compared with the Phnom Penh life and Sim Reap life here, they're totally different. So I would refer to say that's a city life and this is village life. For you, which one you prefer and what is the benefits and what is the other thing short of something, you know, city life cannot provide but village life can. Mm -hmm. In the other hand, you know, what is a good point of it? Some people, they want to stay in the city by education, by working, by like for their business, which is really good for them to be like moving around after like doing the business. They can back home for family really closely and some or some like uh, people that study at university, they can like finish their work and then head off to, uh, to study and then back home really closely too. And some people, they which is they, they feel like uh, they prefer to stay in the village, they don't have to be like a uh, challenge because mm -hmm. living in the city is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. They need to be like study hard, work hard, and then they need to be like complete everything. For in the village, you don't have to care much. You just only like wake up and then getting like breakfast and then go to the rice field and bring back with uh, some fish. And then if you can like fishing back home and grab some vegetable on the way, that and then back home cook that's it and then enjoy with the lifestyle in the village so are you saying in the village life you don't have to get your thing done uh, <laughs> in the village life can be the thing done but in the village like more chill than like in the village like, really chill life because like even like uh, you don't have to be rushed at all because you know like uh, most of them they do with agriculture which is doing with the uh, farming and then you already know those kind of things like because like for them they just uh, follow like uh, generation to generation like you know already like you don't have to be like oh this time this one is going to be like changing too much you know like exactly you want but uh, in the city like most of the things like changing the, in the last minutes so when you're a kid for sure you have been playing around you know in the rice field like with your pals just you know kicking around flying around mm -hmm. right and tell me something about it when you're a kid time or child time with your friends you know do you guys catch the frog what do you do like when you're a child oh when you say that it rem reminds me with the childhood because uh, in the child the childhood is really a uh, uh, fun life because as uh, you say like in the life in the lifestyle the childhood like when the rainy season uh, when the rainy season, we know about like where we're gonna be calling every friend about oh we're gonna be hang out catching the frogs and then when we back home for for the, the uh, for for to give the, those frogs to the mom and then the mom can cook with the delicious food for us like they wish this that I, I miss the most and then uh, for me when I I start to be grow up I feel like I want to do things like differently and challenging because like I've been uh, uh, used to that light in my whole life so I want to change in something when I grow up it's kind of like it's more challenge every day and more challenge every day especially during this time like uh, it's COVID time like two years almost two years already like we've been like challenging and then uh, for us we, we feel like it's more new thing to learn and then like we kind of like yeah uh, we need to be like prepare well about like something getting new again and again that's a very good spirit, guys. And I'm sure some of your friends, same age as yours, you know, I know you're 17 forever, maybe same as me. But um, some of them, I'm sure they are already married, they have kids, they have a daughter and sons. So, do you have a baby? Actually, um, I have families as well, because like, yeah, mm -hmm. I have three kids at home as well. It's kind of like that, but uh, during I'm working and as everyone see that I'm working hard like I've been like uh, working with a uh, few places mm -hmm. and then like it's the first person that know me they don't know that I'm it's quite like 
age because like they feel like I'm a young person and then they don't think that I have the family mm -hmm. actually I have like three kids and then my wife like yeah, stay home she used to uh, uh, selling some maybe products. three of your kids are all married um, no, they are too young for me <laughs> because you say you are so young uh, so who knows your real age exactly you might be 57 it's just, uh, yeah it's just appearance uh, mm -hmm. appearance it's just the, the first look, they feel like yeah, I'm too young, but it's the people that know me that closely. They know me well about how my age, about how my background, how I've been working like a uh, long time already. But like uh, when the first, the first uh, sign and the first look, for sure everyone they didn't know how, 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 how I do, how, uh, how I work, and how like uh, I, I, I passion about my work as well. How do you see the relationship between you and the, you know, your shop, like a footprint? You see you and the footprint. How do you put your emotion on this project? Like from what perspective? And for my perspective, for this uh, uh, project, for this coffee shop, it's feel like a, um, it's just like a, my baby because uh, we, we grow together because like myself and my founder which is we, we part of the together to grow this business and then we want to see that uh, footprint stand forever and then especially the like, footprint need to be like stay in Cambodia and can be expand more to the different area in Cambodia and then we can explore our project to 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 let everyone know about like what footprint does and why that why this country need footprint as well there's a lot of people that are trying to right now waiting for the time you know that is coming when everything the border is open i have a lot of friends that are right now in different countries they are looking forward everything's open and they really particularly want to visit cambodia and as right now we can see Sim Reap is working so hard, you know, like in different kind of perspective, especially in the basic construction, the workers are working every day. I think they are preparing for the future when everything's open. And how long do you think it might take, in your personal opinion, like the, everything could be at least ready to accept or ready for the tourists coming in? And for the road constructions, as that, it's what I feel every day. Like as I see, like in, even in front of the shop, like uh, for my expectation, it's gonna be like expect like uh, during the December because we feel like uh, during those times gonna be a good time for like uh, the tourists to come in because like everyone start to get like vaccinated. Most of them they get like two two doses already, and some of them they can get third dose. And then the school already prepare for the, the reopening again, and then oh, it's a good time for the road finish as well. And Could you give us a few tips or advice for people right now who is watching this program, and especially those who want to visit Cambodia? And for Cambodia, we really highly recommend to come to visit Cambodia because, like. To visit Cambodia is not just about like to visit the temple, and for us we have the the, the strong history behind, which is like more to learn about how the Cambodian done so far and how the uh, difficulty about Cambodia history, about the killing field, about the the lifestyle of Cambodia, how different people living in the city and villages, and some people living at the floating village when the, the tourists they can come to Cambodia they, they know more about like how the, the lifestyle in Cambodia look like because like for them they can learn more from the uh, online by uh, YouTube or by the uh, article website something like that but if they can come to Cambodia they know more clearly about like Cambodia is not just about like the, the temple when they come to Cambodia the first expression they're gonna see how the friendliness of the, the Cambodia and then like for this is the the good the good point for Cambodia that you cannot find in this country which is like very friendly. So I'm very happy that I have personally learned a lot of information and knowledge from Bang and then hopefully next episode that we can visit more local artists and the local people 
giving us more story about the lifestyle in Simrip. Thank you, Bob. As you can see here, I'm right now working in the co-working space. So not here you can only enjoy good food and very nice atmosphere. There's a lot of a book you can browsing with your friend, especially when you're traveling. I think it's super nice to have a book next with you. I'm Mario, the host. I will see you in next episode, but subscribe on us on Facebook, Instagram, and WeChat. I'll see you soon.